Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to a brand new mod spotlight for Bibliocraft. Bibliocraft is a relatively new mod that's come out uh, about a version or two ago, and it adds all kinds of really neat stuff to the game. It adds a bunch of different blocks and different items, and um, one of the cool things about it is the mod author is not too keen on mod uh, item interfaces, so he tries to let you interact with the uh, blocks in-game rather than interacting uh, you know, through a, a GUI or a graphical user interface. So uh, there's a bunch of different blocks to add in here you can see uh, there's a bunch of cool things like uh, different desks and book stands and bookcases armor stands and uh, all kinds of neat stuff different places to store and uh, put items and armor and all kinds of cool neat things so how about I get started showing you guys what bibliocraft is all about and then you guys will go download it yourselves and try it because it's a really neat mod Alright guys, one of the first items I want to show you are called bookcases. Now bookcases can be crafted like so, just some regular oak and wood planks and slabs, and you can place them in the world like this, and they can come in four different varieties, the different types of wood that are available in Minecraft. Now these guys are pretty cool. Uh, basically, the, the bookcases here are kind of what got this mod started, and it's part of the reason it's called Bibliocraft, which means book. Uh, well, Biblio does at least. Um, what happened, the mod author was just tired of having all these different books. He's got Mistcraft books, he's got Thalmanomicons, he's got Tinker Construct, books, he's got enchanted books, he's got written books. There's books everywhere in Minecraft these days, especially with a lot of the different mods that we have. So he said, I wish I had a place where I could just store these things in a handy position. So that's what he did. He made a bookcase that you can just right click on, boom, and it'll put the book in that position. Uh, now you can right click pretty much wherever you want the book to go and it'll pretty much land there. It does a pretty nice job. Now you can't put um, you know, unwritten books there, so you can't just like throw these things in. That doesn't work. Basically what happens is if you right click on the bookshelf with an item that can't go in there or with an item that's an empty hand you'll kind of see all the books in the bookshelves now if you want you can also remove the books by shift right clicking them uh, in the bookshelf here and they'll kind of pop out for you let's see I think you might need to do it with an empty hand though yep so there you go cool so uh, using an empty hand boom you can take your books right out how neat is that and you've uh, got access to all your books there and then can just put them right back away whenever you want there they are. And they'll go ahead and get positioned exactly where you place them. And of course, it uh, works the same in any of the other bookshelves. Nice. I like that a lot. So a good way to store a bunch of different books. And like I said, you should be able to store most books in these bookshelves from different mods. Um, I haven't found any just yet that don't work. So once this guy got finished making bookcases to store his books, he said, man, I'm getting all kinds of armor now. I've got quantum armor, power suits is coming out, there's armor for Thawncraft, there's armor for all kinds of different mods. So let's go ahead and make ourselves an armor stand. Boom, right there. Pretty cool. Uh, the armor stand, as you can see, can be right-clicked, and you'll notice that your currently equipped armor is on the right, and the armor stand's inventory is on the left. And you can just shift-click it over there, and it'll swap it up. And that is pretty nice looking. We've got our lap pack sitting on there. We've got our quantum armor and boots awesome now you can also shift right click on different armor slots in order to add and remove armor to yourself so you don't have to actually open up the gui you can go ahead and just shift right click and cool adding and removing armor becomes a breeze and look how cool that power suit armor looks on the armor stand. Nice. And of course, shift right click to swap it out. Nice. That's so cool. Now, uh, it's real easy just to change armor from one set to the next. Next up, we've got display cases. Now, these guys are pretty neat. There's actually four different colors of display case you can, you can get. You can get uh, the green or the black or the red or the blue. And, of course, there's uh, different kinds of slabs you can use. So you can use uh, the, the um, oak cases or you can just use uh, spruce, something along those lines, jungle wood. And you get all different kinds of cases. Let's check out what these guys do. So you've basically got two options with these display cases. Uh, you can either place them up against a wall, and they don't even necessarily have to be up against a wall. They, uh, you know, you can remove the wall behind them, and even based on the way you place them, they could be standing up like that. Uh, or you can place them on the ground flat like this. Now to open up the case, you have to shift right click. You can only add or remove items from a case uh, when it's open, and you have to uh, shift right click it with an empty hand. You can't do it with a tool or anything like that, as you can see. So shift right click, empty hand, opens case. Now to to put items into it, uh, you simply right click while the case is open. Cool. And it goes ahead and puts the item in there. Right click again and it removes it. And it'll store pretty much anything in there. You can store mod items, you can store tools, you can store torches, stuff along those lines. It's pretty neat. Uh, you can even store a book in there, I'm sure. Yeah. 
very cool. So pretty much any item can be stored in the display case. Uh, it's more meant for displaying items and tools and stuff like that. So if you want to, you know, display your nifty drill and then shift right click to close it again, boom, the drill's sitting in there in the display case looking all fancy. And then you can go ahead and open it up again and collect it and then close it back. Nice. That is awesome. Um, now the other thing to note that uh, you can do is um, just go ahead and um, shift right click with the tool. Now it's just right click with an empty hand and it'll open up the uh, GUI. So you can go ahead and play something in there like that if you want, but you know, I prefer the option of uh, just right clicking with the item to get it in there. Pretty cool. And again, shift right click to close it. Very awesome. One minor note here is that if you get yourself a redstone block and place it in there, the case itself will emit a redstone signal. So go ahead and place your redstone block in there and it emits a redstone signal. Just a neat little feature. Cool. Next up in the list of items that can store cool stuff is this nifty guy, the Potion Shelf. Real easy, just uh, some oak wood and some regular wood and a uh, glass bottle. Just like with the bookshelf, the Potion Shelf can store potions. You guessed it. And wherever you right click is where the potion gets stored. How cool is that? Uh, you can go ahead and put whatever you want there, really, and it should just kind of render nicely and sit down there and kind of do its own thing. Uh, you know, looking pretty fancy. And of course, to get it off, right click with an empty hand. Uh, you can see here, uh, shift right click to get it out, and then just right click with nothing in your hand to actually open up the GUI. So there you go. Uh, so you can store all the potions you want on there, or I guess up to at least 12. Yeah, look at that. Cool, huh? Yeah, the potion shelf is awesome. And again, like I said, shift right click to pop off whatever you're looking at. And yeah, it's pretty nice. But again, it has to be an empty hand that you shift right click with. Nice. And of course, all four varieties of wood. Now, if you guys are anything like me, you've got a million tools that you carry around with you. You've got the MFS multi-tool, you've got the electric treetop, you've got wrenches, you've got omni wrenches, you've got industrial craft, you've got build craft, you've got hose, you've got axes, you got all these tools that you carry around. Well, don't worry about that. Enter the tool rack. Yeah, that's right. These guys come in all four different colors of wood, and they're really easy to make. Just some slabs around some iron ingots. And you'll get yourself a nifty little rack that you can simply right-click with any tool, and it'll get stored in there. And it looks like there's about four slots that you can actually store these things in. And it does a pretty nice job of holding all your different tools. Look at that. And anytime you need access to one, just right-click with an empty hand. Boom. It shows up. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Ah, that's just too cool for me. I will seriously be using the tool rack pretty much exclusively now that I've discovered this thing because it is awesome. You know me, I've got like tons of inventory issues, right? Because I'm always carrying around all this junk. I usually have a chest dedicated to tools. Now I can store it there. And of course, if you just go ahead and, uh, you know, right click on it with a uh, shift right click with an empty hand, you'll have access to the four inventory slots and you can just put whatever you want in there and you're good to go. And of course, if you don't want to be restricted, you want to be able to put anything anywhere, go ahead and grab yourself a wooden shelf. Real easy. Uh, simple recipe here. And the shelf, you can place pretty much anything on. Look at that. Boom. Put that guy on there. Put the minium stone. Put torches. Put a sword. Whatever you want. Put any item you want on this shelf. It'll happily accept it. Cool. Just right click with anything that's not accepted and it'll, uh, uh, you know, uh, just right click like that. Puts it on. Uh, shift right click. Maybe right click with an empty hand. There you go. Opens up the GUI. Cool. Next up is the label. Pretty neat looking, right? The oak wood label or any other kind of label that you might want to put on there is uh, pretty nice for placing on chests to kind of label them as to what might be inside. So uh, just shift right click on a chest to place the label and then you can uh, shift right click uh, with an empty hand to open up the GUI. And the nice thing about this is it actually has four slots uh, which you can tell it what's inside this chest and it'll do a good job of showing you what kind of things are in here. So for example, you might have like a chest with random uh, cobblestone, dirt and gravel or something like that. You might put that on there or like I did, just put random items on to demonstrate. Pretty cool, huh? So you can put three items on each of your labels. And if you have a double wooden chest, you can put a label on each wooden chest. Pretty good looking. Uh, so let's go ahead and get one of those just to demonstrate. So grab a double wooden chest right here, and you can put a label on each one. Awesome. Shift right click with an empty hand to open up the GUI. Now, storing your books in these little bookcases is cool, but we've also got the desk. Again, four types of wood that you can use for the desk, and you can go ahead and see here the recipe. Not too bad, just need a torch and a feather. They have a pretty nice little look to them. Uh, the desk, you can uh, right click on either the back left, so right back there, or the back right over here, and add a bunch of books to. Okay, so uh, go ahead and store that in there. 
and you can see here when we open up the the GUI I think it's back there it's got uh, four books can be stacked on either side and then a center inventory uh, you can actually do this check this out you can uh, snag a book like so and you want to have an empty hand when you do this and just place that book in the center block there like that and you'll be able to open and read the book so there's dire book 20 cool uh, you can go ahead and uh, again shift right click to remove and place this one here instead and read that Dire Book 21? That doesn't make any sense. Nonsense. So the desk is a pretty neat addition. Uh, at this point, you can only read signed books, so you can't use this with the Thaumonomicon or any other mod-related books to actually read them. You can store them here, as you can see, um, but if you actually like place them down like so, they uh, aren't readable, so you can't actually read them. But uh, I believe the mod author, uh, Nuchaz, is trying to uh, get that to work. So, pretty neat. And the most important point to show about this uh, bookcase, or the desk here, by the way, is uh, that it does re record and remember the last page you were on. So this is only page one of one. There's only one page in this book. But you can go ahead and, uh, you know, flip through the pages, and every time you come back to the book, it'll be at the same page you were left off at. And even more importantly, that's server side, so other people will also walk up and see the page that was last looked at. So if somebody else comes over, they'll come see which page you were last looking at as well. All right, guys, now for a couple really complicated but really neat items uh, that are brand new, like just got added a couple days ago uh, to BiblioCraft. We've got the typesetting table is the first one you're going to have to look at here. Now, this guy is not too hard to manage. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get myself a button because we're going to need a redstone signal here. Now, uh, a good way to look and figure out what you need to do on the typesetting table is to have a pair of reading glasses, and that is not the correct recipe. That is, yes, simply iron, some glass panes, and some ink sacks. Cool. Get you a nice pair of reading glasses, and Steve just looks so cool with the reading glasses on. Yo, how's it going? So uh, if you do have reading glasses on, when you look at the uh, table here, you'll see a little uh, pop-up interface show up telling you what you need to do. It tells you to select a book. Now, uh, if we do right-click on this interface here, you'll see that there currently are no books listed. Why is that? Well, this little contraption will allow you to duplicate books, as cool as it is. So I've got a book written here. It says, this is a book, la la la. Page two is cool, as are bow ties. Nice. And uh, the name of this book is Bow Ties Are Cool by Direwolf20. Quite a cool book, right? Uh, so simply right click on the bottom here and you'll see that it uh, is a nice red book sitting up there. Now if I uh, shift right click on this guy, he turns blue. Cool. Now when I right click, he comes back into my inventory. All right, now if I right click on this guy, we can see Direwolf 20's bow ties are cool. Now is the chosen uh, item. Look at that, cool, right? So we've got Direwolf 20, bow ties are cool. Awesome. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do here is place this guy, a print press chase. Okay. If we look at the recipe here, it's another piece of iron and some wood. Okay. We can go ahead and place this guy right up there. One chase. Cool. Bow ties are cool. One chase. Give it a redstone signal. And boom. It'll go ahead and give you this nifty item a printed press plate of Direwolf 20's book, Bow Ties Are Cool. Nice. Now, if you want to clear this thing, go ahead and place this guy uh, right here on the left-hand slot like so, and shift, right-click, and it'll clear the chase. Now it's empty again, and it'll go ahead and be ready to create another uh, book chase. So there we go. I just created it again, and boom, printed press plate of Direwolf 20's bow ties are cool. Awesome. Now, let's use this in the printing press. All right, so how do we use the printing press? It's really pretty easy. First off, you're going to need some ink sacks, all right? Uh, you can go ahead and right-click these guys up on the top, and you'll see it went ahead and uh, put all 64 ink sacks right up there. It even tells you right now, 64 ink. Cool. So that's kind of where you want to place it to right-click and put your ink sacks in there. And you don't have to put all 64, and you can put one or two at a time. Uh, so I got three in there. It's not really that full. Uh, if I put, you know, 30 in there, for example, it's going to fill up more. And then another 30, you know, up to 64, it's pretty full of ink. Now, as for books, well, those are easy. Just go ahead and place them uh, down here, I think it is. How do I get it in there? There we go. Okay. So the book goes right there. And finally, the printing press goes right there. Ta-da! Printing press is operating. Direwolf 20s, bow ties are cool. Nice. Printing press is operating. And when it's done, it's got a nice book here that I can go ahead and pop off. And look at that! We have Bow Ties Are Cool by Direwolf 20 duplicated perfectly. 
Excellent. Nice. Now, uh, on a server, you'll be able to access these, um, I believe, uh, that other books made by other players. So if you want to go ahead and create some printing presses on the server and go ahead and set up like a nice little book system, you can, and it works pretty nicely. Uh, you can see even here, if you put a whole stack of 63 books, it'll just go crazy, and it'll use up ink each time. So we've got 62 ink remaining here. Uh, it's going to go ahead and print that book, and there we go. Cool. Nice. 62 ink, bow ties are cool, very nice. I like it. So we can keep making more and more of these books. Just gotta remove, I believe, and reinsert the printing press to get this thing going again. Oh, you know what, we have to remove, that's what we have to do. We have to remove the printed book. All right, that makes sense. So once you remove the printed book, then it'll be able to create a new one. Let's see. That is cool looking. Nice. So the printing press is doing its thing, and it's duplicating this awesome book written by me. Hooray! And again, if you're not using the reading glasses here, you won't see these little pop-ups telling you how much ink or where to put items or whatever. So you can see no pop-ups here with the glasses off, but put them back on and bow ties are cool. Speaking of these glasses, by the way, there are a couple other items. If you want to just look a little bit more stylish, you can get yourself some tinted glasses. Real easy. Just a little bit of gray dye goes on and check out how cool Steve looks now. Oh yeah, wearing some shades. That is awesome <laughs> and then if you want you can also go with the monocle this guy uh just some gold nuggets and some glass panes the monocle oh yes very stylish and it doesn't even cost 80 dollars. nice direwolf 20s bow ties are cool showing up when i'm wearing the monocle not showing up when i'm not so those three items all kind of act the same way and there's only a couple more items left to show you guys uh here we've got the uh tape measure All right, and there's just one or two more items left to show you guys. This here is the tape measure. It's uh, iron ingots surrounded by tape measure reel, which is just some string and some dandelion yellow. Pretty neat little feature here. You can right click on a block and it'll start a measurement. And if you come over to another block, boom, it'll tell you how many blocks away it is. And it'll give me an exact measurement. Now, if you right click in the air, it'll switch the mode. And if you right click on a block and then come over here and right click on another, it'll tell you how far to the north and south, east and west, and even the height difference. Not bad. That is cool. Really cool, actually. Nice. So there you go. Bunch of different options for measuring, uh, you know, the difference in height and the north, south, east, west changes. Cool. So uh, again, just right click in the air to change it from one mode to the next. And finally, this nifty guy. A book plus a redstone torch yields redstone volume one by Direwolf20. Uh, just a cool trick with this. Um, probably could have covered it earlier, but no big deal. Uh, simply place this book in a bookshelf and the bookshelf will then give out a redstone signal. Ooh, fancy. Oh, that would be a neat way to set up like a secret door or something, you know? Pull the book out, you know? Here's a you know bookshelf with a bunch of stuff in it and you just walk up and you pull out the right book and boom, a door opens. Oh, that would be awesome. And with that, guys, I think we've got the Bibliocraft Mod Spotlight all pretty much covered. Bunch of cool items here, from printing presses to storage for books and items and armor and tools and all kinds of nifty things. All pretty awesome. Uh, the Bibliocraft Mod is going to have a link in the description of this video on where you can go download it at. Definitely recommend checking it out. And to those of you who like to ask this question on every Mod Spotlight I do, will this be included in the Direwolf 20 pack? It most definitely will. Once the uh, next version of the pack comes out probably either 1.5 or 1.6 depending on when all the mods are ready uh, we will definitely be adding bibliocraft uh, to my pack uh, assuming we get the permissions from the mod author which i think i think they have so yeah definitely love this mod it's cool uh i think my favorite item here is just the tool the little tool thing that i can store all my tools on that is awesome for me and i really like the armor change too i actually mentioned to the mod author i'm like hey would it be cool if we like double right clicked to switch all our armor at once like the whole suit and he said yeah he might look into doing something like that so that might be something that's coming down the line we'll see all right guys direwolf 20 signing off hope you enjoyed bibliocraft and take it easy